We're back. <laughs> it's been a while. Go this on, you might even have to introduce yourself this time. Wow. This is Paul. Yeah, this he is, runs this business. I'm, a, good, I'm does... a good looking slim one. <laughs> He's the ugly fat one. He has this business where he does RS500 sometimes. Allegedly. And I'll do it the rest of the time. When you're here. <laughs> anyway, we thought we'd better do an update, haven't we? Because it's been a while, yeah. hasn't it? And things yeah. have changed. Yep. Yeah. There's been a few things in, in and out, so we ain't. This isn't just all we've done whilst we've been away. Yeah. But, we've um, done one more car. But, <laughs> but hopefully we've got a bit of time now so we can get some more videos through. Uh, it's him, <laughs> not me. Anyway, where are we? So, we've had a couple of cars in this week, haven't we, to sell mm -hmm. and sold them both yesterday. Yeah, there was, you, you had a bit of a, a stint where nothing really sold, did no, you? No, now we're selling. So, it's not like there's nothing being in. You had a few... Nice low mileage five hundreds in, but yeah. nothing on them. No, they've gone back. They're still for sale. They can be bought, but we sent them back to owner, which is to keep them safe, really, and groom here. So we got this in Moonstone Blue five hundred uh, three door, not a five hundred. Last owner, the guy we sold it for, he's had it twenty seven years. Um, so we sold this yesterday. Um, it had a, well, it's got a big bar exhaust on it. I've ordered a brand new exhaust for it. I know that's coming tomorrow from Greenwood Racing, a standard one. It had the big 500 intercooler in it, um, a turbo pre-cooler and that. So we've taken that out, put a standard intercooler back in it, got rid of the turbo pre-cooler, got rid of the breather kit on it. So under the bonnet now will look totally standard, won't it? Mm -hmm. And we're just doing a timing belt tensioner on it and a service on it before it goes to customer on an MOT. So that's this one. Shall we have a better look at it? Yeah. When we get the camera. Get the camera and we can see this. Um, these are the bits we've taken off it. So it had a barely breather kit on it, had the big 500 intercooler, which is not wrong with it, but it's just, the car was totally standard. So we had a, a intercooler in stock, so we've just given it a quick lick of black paint to make it look nice, put a standard intercooler back in it. Just going to take the belt off it now to do with the belt and tensioner and service. It's a nice thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Real nice, original, genuine. Genuine car. Shall we have a look at exhaust on it? Oh yeah, have a look at that pea shooter exhaust that's on back and you'll see why we're changing it. Try not to vomit, won't you? Look at that, eh? We're going to be inundated now with people ringing us. I want that exhaust for my Cosworth. Not. Sapphire, look at that. Just had that in for a service. One nice of our... Sat, yeah, beautiful, absolutely stunning, stunning Sapphire Cosworth. If I had a Sapphire, this would be it. Best driving Cosworth? 100%. I've always said that. Two-wheel drive Sapphire, best driving Cosy of them all. But, you know, better than the Escorts, better than everything. You just drive nice. But this is lovely, exactly what I'd have. A white two-wheel drive, cloth trim. Beautiful, beautiful car. Just done a service on that. That's it for a customer. He has a big collection of cars and he brings them all to us for service and MOT every year. And it's got the phone. We like a phone, don't we? Yeah, we like a phone. Look at that. Tried ringing someone on it, but it didn't work. <laughs> well, that's lovely, isn't it? Let's walk. Come on. Hang on. We ain't finished looking at this yet. Haven't we? Yeah. Ah. And don't forget. Has to be in every video. Oh, there the cat. Is. There she is, look. Little cat. I thought we were looking at new trailer. Oh, that's what we're pointing at. No, we don't need to look at new trailer. Back in here. See what else we've got. Duckham's car back on the ramp. Again. We're no engine in it this time. Yeah. We'll probably take that off again next week when we need the ramp back. <laughs> that one's nearly finished, isn't it? This was a full recommission. Yep. This has been parked up for 30... Five years was and it? And anyone who can't remember our video from four months ago saying, well, it can't be a real one, it's on a deep plate. Yeah, it's a pre-production car, this. And it, we took it for its very first ever MOT. So it had only been two and a bit years old, and then the, the owner packed it up. Never used it again. We this is the one you said was in a lean-to on it, covered in blankets. Is that that one? Well, it was in his garage at Cider House, covered in blankets and that. Yeah, there was a thing on video on YouTube about it when Silverstone Auctions picked it up. So we've been through that, haven't we, Steve? Completely mm -hmm. recommissioned it. All new brakes, belt tension, everything. Well, we've only like done that. the absolute bare minimum, haven't we? Because the yes. owner wanted it as original as possible. Kept it as original. So all we've got to do with that is we're waiting for a radio to come for it because somebody changed the radio and put the wrong one in it. 
steam clean it underneath, steam clean it under bonnet, and that's going back. So that's that nearly done. We've got this in for sale for a customer. This is not yours, is it? No. If I everybody says, I'm surprised you're selling your Bastos car. No, this is um this was built by another company, a brand new build car. Um and the customer's decided he don't want it now for he's going into racing Mustang. So he's asked us to sell this for him. So if you want a brand new built Group A RS500 and you want to avoid the queue, the waiting queue, this is for sale on the button, ready to go. Just want to set up and, you know, usual general check over before you race it. But Stick it up in the air, let's have a look, because this is a perfect time we can show the difference between the Rouse so and the... compressor on, have we? I'll go up, won't it, without it? Will it? Oh, Will yeah. Try. Well done. We can have a look at the Rouse back end and the Eggenberger back end next to each other. See what you get for your money when you buy Eggenberger. Come on then. Yeah, so here you can see this is a Rouse spec car. No, there's no sumps are different, aren't they? Yeah, completely different. Yeah. Same gearbox. Obviously just different ways of mounting things and what have you. The main part. The rear exactly bay. As you can see there, this is the early type as well, where you have to put shims in there to adjust it, which baffles me really. Because the later one, they dropped a rose joint down so you could adjust the rose joint. But whoever built this car has gone to the earlier, the early way of doing things. It's got inboard springs on it, like all the Rouse cars had, rather than a coil over on the rear. Um, don't know what the benefit of that is, but there we are. There's a Rouse specification car, which is. I'll show we nip straight across there. Yeah, there you go, and you can see on a proper car. <laughs> Negenberger spec. You can see here we get the nice big alloy rear arm. So this has got a coil over as well. Yeah, coil over rather than an inboard spring. Inverted dampers on a coil over. Yeah. Anti roll bar mounts up here instead. Yeah. We ain't got that far yet with it. But it's over there. You can see there's a big difference there, isn't there, between? I think so. I mean, obviously they're a lot more expensive. These are slightly. Are they slightly longer, it put the wheel slightly further back in the arch. Yeah, well. these are what they call Evo rear arms. So what these do is when you lower the suspension, it, it retains the wheel in the middle of the wheel arch rather than pulling the wheel in further forward. Um, yeah, very, very trick. Or mounting bolts are through into the roll cage on these wings here. So it's solid mount into the cage. Just a, we think a lot better. Well, the world does, don't they? Eggenberg cars were always known as the best in the world. Um, look at that one piece. Well, it's two piece actually. You can unbolt that bottom pan off that sump. Well, that's a magnesium two piece baffle. There's a lot sump. going on in that sump as well, isn't there? I, right. I looked at that one in spares, and there's all sorts of bits oh, and the pieces gates in there. And it's proper. Yeah. Magnesium bell housing rather than an alley one. They just trick out there. Anyway, that's enough bragging about our Eggenberger cars. Eh? Engine mounts, so they're different. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Let's go Maybe back over to that one, in front of that one again. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, so that one's mounted on the subframe like a standard Cosy. And it's a, a modified standard engine mounting as the Eggenberger ones are unique casting. Anti roll bar's different. We, we think that's. Possibly a standard anti roll bar. Modified. That's modified. Yeah. Whereas the other ones are a one off. Could be here all day, couldn't we? Say? Yeah. I suppose we should mention under bonnet on this, really, shouldn't we? Yeah, because that's best bit. <laughs> this has got Harvey Gibbs built engine in it. It's a 550 plus brake horsepower. It's not a normal, uh, very fast. 
Group A engines, um, pro alloy radiator and intercooler in this car, bigger than it should be, but there we are. Yeah, and they've obviously replicated, because this is a copy of a Rouse car, so they've replicated the, copied the original Rouse airbox, um, breather Breather. system, sorry, had a tank, and um, yeah, that air filter cover box, they've copied that. Very similar to the one we've made, Steve, isn't it? Similar. Yeah, similar. But there we are. It's got quite an interesting, or something we've not seen before, the way they've... Oh, the ele switch, electronic yeah. trip yeah. switch for electrics. Yeah. Because the Rouse car's had an original, just the old-fashioned big key one there, but the customer specified he wanted an electronic cutoff. So they've done that for them. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. But yeah, it sounds well, doesn't it, the engine? Yeah, it does, yeah. Well, to anybody who doesn't know these, they probably think not, because all you hear is the clutch rattling. Well, yeah, that's how they are, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly how they yeah. are. But there we are. A nice car for somebody though, for somebody that wants to go racing, that wants to just jump in a car, do a bit of testing, a bit of shakedown. I haven't looked inside yet, have we? So no, I haven't looked inside. inside. You'll see, basically, it, again, it's a copy of like Andy Kirkley's car. You can see all the coolers in the back. So all the pipe work for the oil coolers under the floor sit inside the car. Air jacks are in a different place though, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, the air jacks are in a different spot. And uh, the dash is a copy of a Rouse car as well. Do we have a look at the two? Because that, that's the Rouse one. Let's have a look at the Eggenberg one. So there's a lot more gauges and stuff in this one, isn't there? Yeah. And of course, we run them trip switches rather than the fuses. That's then the, the idea being if a fuse pops, there's not much you can do. But if a trip pops and you want to get back to the, or trips, if a trip trips and you want to get back to the pits, you've got half a chance of holding it in. Nine times out of ten, there's any electric man will tell you. Sometimes someone can blow a fuse, put a fuse back in it, and it's absolutely fine. So... At least with that, you can reset it, and, and if it pops again, like Steve says, you just keep your thumb on it, it'll get you back to pits, hopefully. So we prefer that system, we prefer the, the trip switches. There we are, I think that's enough, isn't it, on this car. That's got the quick fills as well. Nearly as nice as ours, them, aren't they? Yeah, have we got them in this one? No. This has got ATL ones it's in. It's got ATL ones in, but yeah. I was weren't made in time to put in this car, were they? No. But we might swap them. I think we will. We'll put our own new fuel fellas in there. So there we go. That's them two. Yeah. Nice to see a comparison, isn't it? Of yeah. an Eggenberger and a Rouse. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or two new builds. Yeah, two new, yeah. 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 We're biased, aren't we? Well, I think it's how people interpret. When you're building something from new, it's open to a slight interpretation. So yeah. this is how someone interprets a replica of a Rouse car. And obviously this is our, our interpretation of a of an Eggenberger car. Well look at this, Andy Kirkley's car. Looks terrible because it's got the it's got that rocker cover is just a temporary one we put on so we don't scratch the refurbished one to last minute. But been on with this, haven't we? We've had all one off hoses made by Roos Motorsport yep. for us, so they're all one off for this car. Um, Steve, look at that, he made that yesterday because the original <laughs> one was a bit tatty, so he made that and he's really chuffed with this tonight, aren't you, Steve? Yes, that's good. Listen. <laughs> that's Steve's pat on the back for that heat shield, he loves it. Yeah. I'm so what we're on, we're now fuel system in this, aren't we now? The yeah, fuel yeah. tanks come. Yeah, I mean, 
Air Jacks are in it now. I don't think anyone's seen them. Oh, no, they're in. So we made them rings up, didn't we, to get the Air Jacks in? Yeah. But yeah, I'm just on with the fuel system now. Got the brand new fuel tank in from ProFlex. They've made them for us. Steve's put all brand new rubbers on there rather than the bodged up old ones. And what have you done, Steve? To that were the old it. ones, wasn't it? That's the old ones. They look nice, don't they? And what you've also been done, Steve, aren't you, is that's the, the what I call the aluminium link pipes there. Yeah. You join the two. So if you look on there, there's nothing on there to stop the tube sliding off. They were the swaged, were they? The same with them. So what Steve's done with that one and he's going to do with this one is put a swage in there all the way around so that when the pipe's on, the Jubilee clip will clamp and it can't pull off. Because about three or four years ago, there was an RS500 that... Um, vibration that the pipe had slid off all the fumes went into the car and it sat on fire just because that wasn't on properly so we're making sure that doesn't happen with this car aren't we mm -hmm. so that's what you're on with at the moment steve yeah. isn't it? piping it all up underneath as well yeah you'll get down there so we're just making up all the pipes so that's bottom of the fuel tank Almost like it's basically a swell pot that they've made and dropped through the floor, and then that feeds the, the lift pumps and then filter, and then from there it goes all the way across to the other side of the car over here. And that's basically where the high pressure pumps will be fitted there, and they're fed out the bottom of that swell pot. That big swell pot that sits in there, yeah. So that. Them dash tens, are they? Tens, yeah. What feed the high pressure pumps? That then goes to the front of the car, and then we've got to return back to the swell pot. The top ones, I think, ones are breather and bits. We didn't obviously strip the car. No, so but we've worked it out. We we're know working it, it out as we go along. So this is well on its way now, isn't it? Finally. Yeah. Obviously, Andy's been keen to get it done, but it's obviously when his finances are available, he's not a a wealthy guy, so we've been working on this for him as and when he's got funds available. Um, the Texaco car we're back on with that, oh, we should send it down because engine yeah, and boxes. Engine and boxes in. Let's have a look. Did you mention that you're, you're making these? No. Go on then, tell everybody. Well, you put a post up yesterday, didn't you? So you've decided now that we'll make some of them, so we'll make them to fit a standard T3. Yep. A T34 and or a T4. T4. We were asked about them, weren't we? A few people asked if we yeah. could make them. Oh, What's brakes that? are on, look, Steve. You haven't so. got that. So these are um, original calipers, AP calipers, brand new discs, but the bells are ours, aren't they? Yep. We've had the bells made, so they're brand new. So they're all on now. So we're moving forward slowly, aren't we? biggest difference is we've got the engine in finally. Look at that. So this is prob probably the last genuine Eggenberger engine ever made, is it? That is the last Dino Run brand new Eggenberger engine. We sent it to Arvies, didn't we, just to have it checked over because it's obviously been stood for 35 years. So we just wanted it stripped and checked and cleaned and put back together. Um, brand new engine loom on Life ECU. This is going to run. We would like to run it on the original Bosch system, but it's just you can't get them anymore. Too, you know, if anything goes wrong, you can't really fix them. So we've gone for a more modern Life system. It looks sexy in there, doesn't it? We're just waiting now for exhaust downpipes out with that we're ordering from Collins Performance. Yep. And then we're going to make our own side exit exhausts. We've also commissioned our own radiators and intercoolers. So yep. they'll come as a complete package, all bolted together as one, one complete unit. But the company that are doing them for us are, what do they call them? PWR. PWR, they make stuff for Red Bull. And yeah, do all the F1 stuff, yeah. uh, well, Superbike stuff, also, whatever you can think of that includes cooling, they're pretty much 
we were quite impressed, weren't we, yeah. by what they told us and yeah. what they showed us, who they make for and what they do. And yeah, all, like, the, all the British touring car, you know. Yeah, these guys are the business and they've, they've basically copied an exact RS500 genuine intercooler, but it will be more efficient than the original one without it being a bigger capacity. Um, a, a really fancy radiator for us that they guarantee will keep the bees running at where we want them to be, which is about 90, 92 degrees. So we've commissioned them, haven't we? They're on with the first one. And they're actually going to 3D print one, they said for us, didn't they? They're going to mm -hmm. 3D print it, send it up as a package. We can trial fit it, make sure everything's perfect. Any alterations we might want, they'll do that before they put the first one into production. So we should have that in five or six weeks. So that this will be the first one in this car. Airjacks are in this as well. Yeah. So we'll put Airjacks in both now, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we've got Airjacks in them both, so they're all in. Just got a kit to pipe them up, haven't we, Steve? Yeah. So they won't pipe them up on this one. They're in. And another car over here that we've just sold. This car, beautiful white three door, this. I sold this car for a long term owner in 2019 to a lovely lady called Michelle who bought it purely as an investment. Um, she rang me the other week and said she'd time to move it on. So could I sell it for her? I put it up and sold it within a day. One even a day, was it? I think it sold the same day. Yeah, it was really. Yeah, on, he on agreed. It, yeah, bonnet open. He agreed to buy it, didn't he? But yeah. I wanted to do him a walk around video before he committed. Forty-one thousand now from you, genuine full service history. And yeah. your phone normally rings a lot, but with this, it just non-stop on it. People yeah. wanting it. People wanting it. How lovely is that? Only modification is the dump valve. That one's putting back to stand and dumped it. Look at that, that is lovely. Just showing that if you price these cars correctly, they sell straight away. There's a lot on the market at the moment overpriced that are floating around and will be for a long, long time, but this car sold straight away. So what else have we got in? That's, oh. Black 500. Yeah. That's Best get lights on, aren't you? Turn lights on. This, this video is going to be an expensive one if you're turning lights on. I know. Better get some views, hasn't it? <laughs> so this has just come back from paint shop. This is a, a Black 500 that we're restoring for the customer. So this was done by... FC the paint shop was it? Yeah, the Matthias boys, they've done this for the customer. Absolutely stunning job. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. I don't know if it's on the catch. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. I'll That's go for, I'll go from underneath. Yeah. You see in the wheel arches everything's been done in the right colours. All dove grey with all the overspray, so it'll be absolutely perfect. This is for us to put back together, isn't it? Blast yep. everything, powder coat everything. Yeah, so this, I think this was the first job I did when I came to help you was strip this. Yeah, probably was. So yeah. probably, it must have been getting on two years ago yeah, that yeah. we stripped this. A long job for Dan. We've done cars before for Dan. We did a white sapphire for before Cosy for him years ago. Restored that. So we must have done something right, didn't we? Yeah. So he's brought this for us, so this is to do. We've got the black 500. So we're looking sad. The reshell job to do, aren't we? Lovely, isn't it? Yeah. yeah all yeah. suspension there, all been blasted and, and painted. Original, genuine suspension. So this is a, a job to get out into over the winter months and start getting this ready. And then we've got a Moonstone Blue one that's at the paint shop at the moment down Cornwall way. That's another bare shell rebuild. Thought we weren't doing any more road cars. So he keeps saying. Yeah. Have so we forgotten anything? <laughs> oh yeah, we haven't yeah. we? Uh, my old 500. Yep. We got that finished, didn't we? Got it up and running, yep. road tested it, just drove it up and down just to make sure everything was all right. Put laptop on, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And then Jim down at um, Harvey Gibbs at SCSC, he remotely looked at our laptop, didn't he, and made sure everything, he was happy with it and everything was fine. He 
before we road tested it. Um, and I think I've got a little clip of that actually of us plugging laptop in, so I'll, right, put, I'll drop put that, that in. On. Right, this is first test drive of my old RS500 that's had the Harvey Gibbs engine put in it, and we've done an underside preservation, we call it, on this car. So, my old 500, the first time back out in it and back on the road for what will be what 13 years we calculated it, didn't we? Yeah, there or thereabouts. So, we've got laptop plugged into the Life ECU. So we're just going to make sure everything's all right, it's running all right. And then uh, once we're happy, we're going to send it back. And we're going to take it on a trailer back down to Harvey's. And Jim will just check it on, you know, on his laptop, make sure everything's perfect. He's happy with it. And then we can give it a bit of a good thrashing, can't we? So we'll, we'll spin camera. So that's the life ECU and everything mounted inside there. I'm hoping you can hear the audio. And that's the data cable. Oh, that's the comms out of the ECU. It's just a we've just got a Cat5 cable connected, and then on the laptop there is Life Monitor, so we can just keep an eye on what the uh, oil pressure is, engine temps, the Lambda readings, all that kind of stuff. So that should be connecting now, which it is. There we go. There we go. Oh, I better just check out put ball down. And then we drove it, well, we put it on a trailer and took it down there last week because they're just going to do a, a final bit of mapping live on the road on it to make sure everything's perfect before we send it back to Ireland. Or, well, before it comes back in, we rag the shit out of it and do a video on it first. And uh, what You've else? had your orders, haven't you? What you got to do with it when it comes Yeah, back? the owner has told me we have to do a video ragging the backside out of it. With? What? You got, I think his exact words were, you have to scare... Adam oh Smith. yeah, he says I have to do a video with Adam Smith and scare him to death. Well, that's not hard, is it really? <laughs> <laughs> and the only other one, what, what are we missing now? Barn found, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's now across to its new owners. Yep. That went probably maybe three months ago. Yeah, yeah, I would say. So they've had that a while now. Um, so we've got, can probably put out the last video now yep. of basically when David came to NEC and, and seen it. Yeah. Um, and his intentions at the time were to keep it and use it, weren't they? But they were, but unfortunately, due to ill health, he asked us to sell it for him, which we did straight away, didn't we? Yeah. We could have sold it 10 times, couldn't we, honestly? I don't even think crazy. it was advertised, was it? I can't remember. No, that. it wasn't advertised for sale. We just mentioned it on a couple of videos, and people rang up, didn't they, wanting to buy it. We had a guy came here, didn't we? Yeah. Um, desperate to buy it, even though we're taking a deposit on it. Wait, I'll have it, I'll have it, I'll have it. And unfortunately, we're taking a deposit, so he, he couldn't have it, but. Could have sold that ten times over real easy. So that's the end of the work, the workshop roundup then. Yeah, it is. Yeah, quite a bit different, I would think, to the last video. Yeah, three so, three race cars in here. Yeah, loads of them. <laughs> so there we go. Thanks for watching. Yeah, and we'll catch you on the next video when he gets it done.